into the cloud. Hello and welcome to Show of Truth. My name is Shannon and this is a show for embodied leadership in the new paradigm. We'll talk about what the new paradigm is and I'll also on this episode be interviewing two amazing individuals who also share in life together as well. And we have Fia and we have Eugene here. <laughs> And um, they're both in, we're all in different parts of the world, which is cool. And we're all coming together to share with you. And I will be interviewing them with regards to what new earth leadership means to them. And we'll, we'll flow with understanding why I've chosen them to be on this even more. And you'll understand once they speak about what they're up to. So um, my understanding of both of you and why I'm even bringing you on here for everyone who's watching is they have shared publicly a profound love that they have both found within themselves and share that with others in the world and also between them. And I'm sure that there's a lot of magical ingredients involved in all of that, involved in sustaining your own sense of purpose and your own direction and being able to bring forth sort of like a legacy like you've shared of in your music, Fia. And so there's a lot that's involved in like bringing forth a legacy. And then there's a lot that's involved in also bringing that legacy into a new way of relating with another human being that might be pushing beyond um, conditioning and all sorts of stuff. So I am having you both on here because I consider you to be individuals who are masterful and continuing to evolve deeper into mastery and many areas that I admire, including relationship and purpose. So mm -hmm. hi, I would love if both of you um, either introduced yourselves and you can do it like together or however you want to for a couple minutes and share what you're up to and uh, what's most relevant for you in the work that you're doing and what you're creating. You want to share? Mm -hmm. You want to go first, Lev? I felt like you were going. I heard you make a sound. <laughs> Should I? Mm. Okay. <laughs> so, um, I'm Fia, and I'm an artist and songwriter, um, and I transform consciousness through music. That is one track that I am playing in this life. And then I'm also um, a shamanic priestess. So I've made wife people enter their power through ceremony, through ritual work, and through uh, session work as well. Um, the priestess path, um, actively taking that on as a part of my journey is relatively new to me. Um, but I'm finding myself moving on quite a fast track and it's opening up a lot of new doors in me and it's crossing over to the music I'm making. So for a long time I thought that these two were uh, canceling each other out or that I had to choose but they're really one and the same um, so that is what I do <laughs> I share my life together with Eugene we just got married this summer we're celebrating uh, four months of marriage today and we're celebrating um, four years together in December and uh, um, I guess I'm going to dive into relationship a little later, but um, this man is a huge part of my life. Um, so I thought I'd mention him in my presentation. So that's a little bit about me. Thank you, Fia. <laughs> hmm. Thank you, Fia. <laughs> um, <laughs> wow. <Well. laughs> And, um, uh, you know, the professional side, I uh, have a school of Tantra. It's called the School of Tribal Tantra. Um, and it's, uh, it's a mystery school that's incorporating uh, the Tantric arts, primarily, primarily uh, Kashmir Shaivism, but integrating it with um, shamanic initiations, with ritual magic, with understanding of quantum science that all of these different arts and practices ultimately prove each other. They're different ways to look at and to work with energy. Uh, 
and actually by learning all of these we can we can become whole in in our own experience of how to move with energy and power and, and love in life and so my my passion the reason i created a school instead of just being a workshop leader is because these these concepts can seem very very out there and there are esoteric realities that that you know the language of which we can choose to communicate in a way that's very hard for people to digest and so the very practices that create separation or create connection are intended to create connection create more separation but my passion is to actually language these arts in a way that that anyone can can receive can can actually use these practices to feel more ease in their life that you know you don't have to become the next tantric teacher and you don't have to change your wardrobe and you don't have to change your name to actually feel more ease and love and power in life that that's accessible for everyone by the nature of the fact that they are born and therefore they're connected to the source of all things which ultimately is love and that love is going to win and so my passion is to share this with the world and actually birth more people who are teaching from their power and from their integrity and communicating in a way that people can actually receive and hear and integrate into their lives because that's 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 how we're going to change course in the world isn't by electing someone new isn't by lecturing people about who they should be but actually just opening their hearts and showing them that there is magic and love in their life right now if they could just see it. And so that's, that's what I'm called to, to, to do and share and bring into the world. Um, and I do it through training people to teach, through workshops when I can, and uh, through organizing festivals. Um, I'll be going back to the States in a couple of weeks for the first city festival in Austin, Texas soon. So um, yeah, that's a big passion for me is to say, how do I take the things that have not just changed, but really saved my life and opened me to the possibility of, of loving life in a way that so far exceeds anything I thought possible. How can I share that with other people in uh, as, as wide a way as possible? Um, and my greatest personal inspiration in this life is my beloved queen, Fia, who, um, <sighs> it's like you spend your life learning concepts of love and then you begin to dance and play with love and love comes in and starts to shatter all of your stories and all the mythology of what love is. That it's not so, you know, soft and fluffy that it actually is, is willing to destroy anything that is not love in your life as, as a way to keep expanding you to receive more love. And then you think, oh, okay, now I get it. Now I've got it. But none of that, can compare to actually being met in love every day with somebody, to, to have that unwavering mirror of love. And that's, and that's what this relationship brings. That's what this, this powerful partnership brings for me, is a, an unwavering mirror so that in the moments when I'm off, or when my small self, you know, finds a way in and I, and, and I go into my stories and I go into my bullshit, that in the mirror of love, that I see in Fia's eyes and that I see in the relationship between us, there's no longer that possibility of going spinning out and, and, and going into the, 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 the depravity and, and wrecking everything because this love is so strong and so true that it keeps me upright as a, a living embodied inspiration every day. Um, the way I think of it is I spent my life learning concepts of love, but now in, in the space between Fee and I, I get to learn from love itself in real time. So there's that. All right. <laughs> um, I think we can end the recording now. <laughs> <laughs> my... <laughs> Uh, mm. I really appreciate sharing you sharing. Um, mm. I have nothing to say because it's all been said so beautifully. Yeah. That was a very complete share. So I really am grateful. I'm stunned.
Um, some things that I wanted to talk about, some like themes, and it's just been coming up a lot, is the theme of family. And in this new paradigm, um, I feel like there's an evolution of what a family is and what, what it means to be family. And um, I know you're speaking of this mirror of love. And I know that not everyone even understands like what you're talking about as like a possibility. Like they don't, cause it hasn't actually happened in like mm -hmm. an embodied way. And so this is like, you are both embodied leaders in this. And so I also, I'm like kind of wanting to light a torch for the sense of like sort of the lost soul feeling and the quality of that seeming like something far away or not knowing how to even begin getting there, begin accessing uh, this unwavering sense of love and connection. And um, I do know that we can have the opportunity of having someone like a mirror coming in as an opportunity, but then also we can be in a state where like that love could be there and we wouldn't even know it. And mm -hmm. so some things that I kind of want to talk about are, uh, how to cultivate recognizing and receiving love like when it's actually there and also um any words for someone who might feel like they wouldn't even recognize it when they see it or want to strengthen their ability to like connect with another in that way do you have any like couple pieces of advice or words of wisdom in that phase of exploring love. Mm -hmm. Either of you. I would say it's it's um as uh, some the most things um on the on the path of coming home to oneself is to begin at home in here and um cultivating love for oneself dedicating time with yourself and diving into what do I want? What do I need? Where am I going? How am I living my life? How can I, like, before even starting like the search for someone else or other people to really go on a deep dive and a treasure hunt within to really solidify like a sense of self. And then we could go in, can we go, then you can spiral off into spiritual concepts. What is the self? And the self is constantly changing, but let's keep it simple. Like I have a sense of self. Like I know who I am. I know my, I know my, I feel my, I feel my spine. I feel my root, you know? And from that place of, I would say embodiment, soul embodiment uh, embodiment of soul and embodiment of my truth then i don't have to do so much because automatically i will in in my field there will start showing up people when it's time um so i would say dedicate time and love towards self-exploration and um if I would say one thing, um, dare to go into the underworld and look at your shadows, look at your traumas and wounds. It's it's like the it's like a super trendy thing in the cautious community, all these words, but it's actually the thing, I would say. As much as it's wonderful to play in the light and the lot of light is not to be diminished, diminished, but in the shadows behind the shadows and in the darkness we recollect back our power and our wisdom and once that is in place then we can meet people from a very very different um perspective because we are in a different place so we can meet people more powerfully um and here i hand over the ball to you eugene my love <laughs> Thank you. I um, 
Yeah, I'm glad that you mentioned it because it is um, easy to forget that it's not just uh, declaring and calling in and blah, blah, blah. And then all of a sudden you get mad with love and then we take lots of Instagram pictures and then, you know, start to, to cultivate a story of, of, of love only to find out that it was a story. Um, but the reason that a lot of us can't find that, that, that powerful meeting place is, um, is one, we don't trust love. Like we're, we're seeking love, but we don't actually trust it because we haven't actually allowed love to penetrate us. I can't trust that you love me when I haven't let love penetrate myself. And so, you know, when Fia talks about going into the, the dark places, it's, you know, it's fundamentally what it is, is can I allow love to penetrate the places in me that I feel are most unlovable so that I'm not seeking somebody else to put in the role of deciding whether I'm lovable. That's what most people are doing. The universe, you know, to just like work with the esoteric concept for a second, it is invested in our ease. It is invested in our, in, in our evolution. And it adapts to our actions. So in this perfect system, it recognizes that most people when they feel attraction, when they feel love, when they feel, you know, that, that yearning for, for, for human connection, that it takes over their life, it takes over everything. And so if you want to give someone a message, send the message where they actually are, right? If I want to get you, a, if I want to send a message to you and have you receive it, I'm likely to send it on Facebook Messenger because that's where people are. So the universe recognizes if, if I'm invested in your evolution, then I need to show you what you need to grow where you're actually paying attention. And where do people pay attention? In their, in their thirst for intimate relationship. And that's why we call in partners. Often we feel like we keep dating the same person over and over and over again. It's because we're not learning the lesson. And so we keep calling in the same lesson in another body. And it tends to hurt more each time. And that's actually... Not that we're fucked up in a mess and not that our partners are horrible. We need to blame them. It's actually this beautiful system of love that says, I need you to learn this. I need you to see this because the thing that's triggering us tends to be something in ourself that we don't love that is being mirrored in the other person. Or we've called in that person that is uniquely capable at triggering our wounds. Not because they're a terrible person and that we're a wounded mess, but because it's time to integrate that wound into love. It's time to let go of the identity that we've associated to those wounds. And that's why they're getting triggered because the universe is saying, I'm gonna keep poking this until you pay attention. And the message isn't, look, you're a wounded mess. It's, hey, it's time to let go of this part of your identity. It's time to bring this pain into love so that it can vibrate from your heart as a gift, as a power. What most people find, you can interview with most of the people who've gone through a journey of, I found myself, I'm in my power, and now I'm sharing something with the world. They will tell you that the things that they tried to deny or remove about themselves, when they finally accepted them and when they brought them into love, became actually their power sources. And that's like the great humor of it all, or tragedy, is that the things that we're trying to deny to get love are the things that will actually call in the love that we seek. And so we have to, to, to look inside first. And for me, it's, it's not as simple as like, like, okay, all right, fine. I'll go look inside and I'll do, I'll do a shadow workshop. Actually before that, what I did was realize I need to get humble and recognize that my story of free will is probably bullshit. That my entire life has been a series of reactions. Because when I was still forming up here and here and here, I was told how to be, right? Most of us have been told how to be. And I either followed it or resisted it. And then that set life in motion. 
And then new stimuli came in. I got a little older, I had new friends and they told me how to be and I followed it or resisted it. And then there were people I wanted to have friendships with or connections with. Then puberty came, they got really confusing and everything was a series of reactions. And so there's like that, like, like getting hit with a bulldozer when you realize my story of free will and I'm powerful and I'm expressed and I'm free. Maybe it's bullshit. Maybe I have no idea who I am. And so the quest is actually to wipe the slate clean and be curious. What do I like? If no one had ever told me who I should be or what I should be, what would I be? What would I be curious about? What would I eat? Who would I hang out with? Who would I love? If I'd never been told and if I'd never gone into that reaction process. So like there takes a humility to go down this path, a humility to say, I don't know. I don't have the first clue who I am. And so I could spend my life continuing to refine my identity through which I'm functioning, or I can actually let go of the identity of even knowing the first clue about myself. And then it gets really interesting to actually go on a journey of not knowing. And I did this for myself. I said, I'm going to consciously accept that I don't know and not seek to know, but to be curious. What does my body like? Right? What, what does, you know, like imagine if you came and inhabited this body for the first time and, and wanted to discover what it likes. And then begin to, to cultivate connections with a sense of curiosity instead of, you know, just, just playing out the patterns that we do already, but to say, what if I observe myself when I'm connecting with others? Not the story I tell myself about what I observe, but just the energy. Where does my heart open? Where does it close? Because sometimes we're contracted around people, but we think, they would, we think they would serve us in our life somehow, or we think we should love them, or we should like them. So we ignore the fact that our body's actually a big no. So to actually say, I don't know who I am, I want to know, let me discover what my body likes, let me discover where my energy opens, where my energy closes. Let me go on this incredible journey of finding out how love wants to move through me, instead of me, painting the picture and trying to make love fit it. And then include, as part of that journey, you include and include and include. And every time you, you, you catch yourself hitting the points of like, oh, oh, but I'm gonna hide this part of myself away because I so yearn to be loved that I'm gonna hide this, which is unlovable. That's the moments that we have to include include that part of myself. Imagine if I'd never been told that this particular character trait or desire or opinion, whatever it is, is unlovable. But if I could let go of, of whatever it is that programmed me in that way and actually just say, the most generous thing I can do is give someone the opportunity to love me. And if I hide any part of myself, then I have denied them the opportunity to love me full stop. Like the whole world, people are going, why doesn't anyone actually see me? Because you don't show yourself. So give them the opportunity to say no, but also to say yes. So how much of me can I include? It's like, like the, the true hero's journey is actually inside, you know, it's not going on a quest outside, it's going inside. And can I go into the, the dark places in me and find the things that I've hidden and then bring them out into the light? and then stand there naked and seen and say, can anyone love this? And if in that moment you can be at ease if the whole world says no, then you might be met with that powerful love. And that's, that's the, the magic formula that I did some years ago. And I actually I didn't do it with like this, any sense that life would end up this way. It was actually that I was so tired of hurting that I didn't care if I was alone anymore. So I can't say like, oh, I made a great courageous act. I was like, no, I just fucking gave up. And I said, you know what? I'm gonna start showing all the bullshit and I'm gonna to try to find the things that I've hidden away so carefully because I'm in pain when people are falling in love with my story of self because I have to deny myself to keep the story alive and that hurts. So if I'm gonna be in pain anyway, I might as well be in pain being me so I can actually enjoy those things that I think everyone's gonna hate on the off chance that someone might like me. And then lo and behold, like the most amazing person that walks the earth like me. So, you know, I can't promise you that, but I could promise you something good, maybe. 
<laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> I um, really like what you said about coming in, you know, and shining the light. I mm. definitely am here for planetary ascension. And I like to continually remind, well, at least what my perspective is, is like ascension is like a bringing in more of the light self into this human thing, not like a leaving the human thing to go some other magical place. Um, yeah. And so this is really cool. Well, I will just, I want to segue into, um, that magical place being like how ecstatic I feel when I, for, well, one, listen to you talk, Eugene, as in one way. And also when, but it's different. And then the way Fia sings, like mm. your singing transports this human vessel into an awareness of a dimension that's magical here, right here. You know, it's like, it's like you're singing of this light but I don't know why I keep wanting to remind it. It's like you are a human singing it. It's not like, even though I would consider, I would consider you a channel, right? It's like, we're, it's not like this channel of something that's like so far out <laughs> of the self. It's like, <clears throat> it's like you're channeling this really very real quality that exists and is accessible. And I get to experience it when you sing. Uh, and when you talk to, <laughs> but I would love to hear a little bit about, um, just <clears throat> what you would say <clears throat> was like the biggest growing edge slash like tipping point, like jumping off the cliff for you in really fully embodying your music mission. And like, I feel like there was, there was a moment where it was like, there's no turning back and this is just like what it is. And I know everyone has a mission and everyone has like a purpose. And when we're connected to our authentic purpose, it shines through. And I am, I'm kind of wanting some words of encouragement slash whatever you want to say with regards to that moment when it became completely undeniable that this is like what is for to, to do <laughs> in that you don't have free will <laughs> or you know yeah. You. yeah um thank you it's um <clears throat> for me that moment was when I in uh 2015 I was invited by Eugene to meet the tantric community for the first time and it was it was a trip to Thailand Kopangan a beautiful um, island in the tropics and um, we were there for Christmas and New Year's and we were very very new then and this was like it was my first time leaving Europe because it, it was a big deal and I came there to this beautiful island and I met people that I've never ever experienced before like a kind of person that I've never experienced before like people who felt fully alive it was like they were lit up from the inside and um, I could see myself in them too. And I felt home for the first time, really. Um, I had been a bit in conscious community, but now I felt home. And uh, it was, we were there for um, about a month, I think. And we had a lot of singing together, like in the evenings, we would gather on someone's balcony and there would be tea and there would be guitars and cuddles. And for some reason there, I had not been like, I'm not a person like, I know I can play and sing and I know I have a lot of beautiful music, um, but I'm not the one who was like, I'm gonna pick up my guitar and sing for you. <laughs> Um, so it wasn't until the end of the evening where I just felt that it's time for me to share. And I said, I, I can play. And I played. And the room stopped. And I experienced this 
just the sense of peace inside of me and this beautiful um, feeling of love in the air. And afterwards, I was showered with the most amazing praise. And now it was like, just, oh my God, only that. Like, thank you. Thank you for touching something that I haven't touched in a long time. Or thank you for showing me something that I didn't know existed inside of me. And I kept having these beautiful reflections throughout the month. And I realized then and there, as I was sharing these songs, these kinds of songs that were speaking about the personal transformation journey, that this was something special and that the music that was coming to me was meant to be shared with the world. And it was then and there that I felt like I don't have a choice. This is simply mine to do. And it would be, um, it would be too painful not to. I've had, I had had some a really a lot of time resisting my own music and I've been trying to divert into other paths. Like I've been, I wanted to be a gardener and then I wanted to be like, I wanted to go up to the north of Norway and like live with a pack of dogs and learn dog mushing. And you know, I think that's the word, sledding, dog mushing, I know. And I'm like, fuck music, I'm not gonna do this. <laughs> And then in there, it was like, no girl, <laughs> this is one of your key tools here. So get out there. And from there, the journey of um, putting my first album together really started. And that was a, <laughs> um, that was a, an experience. Um, but the, um, the meeting with the Tantra community in Thailand, Christmas and New Year's 2015, 2016 was the moment. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. So sorry. No Can you I am so sorry. You're back. Yeah, You're back I am back. Time. That's fine. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it's perfect timing that you just finished. And so you were recording still good. <laughs> Thank you. I, I missed the little end of that, which is fine. Technical difficulties. Um, yeah. <laughs> Thank you for sharing. Um, I really, I just like, I feel sort of, if you have anything else to share after this, it's fine. There's like wanting to wrap, like bring this beautiful sort of like, see like this double helix that you've both formed in, in this sharing and it's, um, the theme that I'm coming away with right now is the concept or the speaking that you shared about Eugenia free will and or not really having free will and of your experience of, you know, there's all these things you might enjoy and are fun, have fun doing and could explore and you're creative. So it's like, why not? But there's this thing that's just like, people are like wanting more of that, like, because it's creating this effect in them and this, this healing in them. And then you're rising to the occasion in your leadership to share that but also how much abundance has been showered upon you and you shower upon others in that accepting of it so in the sense of maybe there's an idea that there's like a limit or we might be limited if we go in this one path and there's all these possibilities but also the it's like the meeting the free will is <laughs> to me is like being able to choose what is and like bring ourselves to that more, like you would say, like you've said, Eugene. So um, bringing yourself to the fact that you have this beautiful gift of music and I get blown away when I listen to it. It's like, uh, 
I guarantee anyone who's what anyone if you haven't heard her music what listen to her music um but I, I would my assumption is that it would be organic but I shouldn't make assumptions I'm like now you would want to hear her music because isn't this amazing um <laughs> but you don't have to it, but it'll rock your world and yeah I'm just really deep in your own your both of yours transformation right now and how much transformation you both offer and so I am humbled and I'm thankful I feel really emotional and the light is being shined in on me and I'm grateful for um your both of your ability to communicate like such real things in a very real way and this is what embodied leadership is is that um you get to witness it like from these two, you know, right now. And I'm super honored. <laughs> I'm a mush. I'm a little bit of a mush. <laughs> and um, this is a beautiful thing. So I appreciate all of you, both of you. And I'm curious if either of you, um, well, <laughs> I'm looking at my notes and the one thing I wanted to say which was really funny funny is like sound and healing are also like really important in embodiment and I know that both of you work with like you also work with sound Eugene I'm sure in your you know tribal tantra training as well and um that the power of sound and vibration actually like affects change and um so just listening to a song that fear writes or say and sings is going to transform you and then like also doing any of the practices i can't i don't know if you want to share anything or you don't have to go into detail but you can because i don't know what your specific flavor of um sort of embodiment practices is but in addition to I'll let can you I'll let you talk about that just like a couple minutes about <coughs> not just listening to sound as a transformational act, but also like well you could say Fia too, like creating sound and allowing like for more sound to come out, whether you sound great, good, bad, whatever, on tone, off tone, on do you understand? <laughs> who who is the question for? It was for either of you, because um, I realized that both of you probably share this in some capacity. Um, I think, Eugene, you had um, your perspective on sound. Sure. Well, as a, as a tantric, um, you know, we could talk about these ancient meditations and meditations and, and ceremonies and rituals, and they're all beautiful and they serve great purpose. But the most profound change comes in that which is elegantly simple and is right before us and accessible to everybody and is almost so simple that we miss it. And that's breath, movement, and sound. If no one remembers, someone could spend a month with me in a course and if they don't remember a single meditation or, or, or a quote, but they remember to breathe fully, full round breaths in their body, to let their body move and to let sound move when it wants to move, then they, they're already set up to have the most powerful and easeful life that they could have imagined. Because our physical body is the primary tool with which we move energy. It's also the primary tool to block energy. And so if we use breath, movement, and sound to let energy move, then we're constantly in the state of transformation. Because our thoughts are energy. They're, they're energy formed. And when we hold on to them like this, this is when we get stuck and we feel contracted and we feel pain in our thoughts. But if we just let the thoughts move through and that we don't have to react to everything, then we're actually creating more ease in our system. Our emotions are energy. Our sexuality is energy. All of these things want to move. They don't want anything else other than to move through us. And then let, let our being actually receive the information as they pass through. And so... Breathing fully. When I breathe fully, I access my entire body. I power the system. I power the, the, the senses with which I can take in 
and integrate information instantly, much faster than the conscious mind can. When I'm moving my body, I'm letting energy move me. Just it's something that the children know, that the creatures know, just observe them. They're always in motion. And this is why they don't get stuck in, in a moment of time forever. Because the body is just moving through and creating space for the next moment, the next moment, the next moment. And then sound. The sound, our, our expression, the expression of our emotions, the expression of our fear, our rage, our sensitivity, all of the sound that wants to move. Mm, is continuing to make space for the next moment. We can't have a new expression when we're still holding on to the old one. And so if we're blocking the sound of this expression, there's no space for something new. So everything we're doing is actually just training ourselves to keep making space for the next moment. The gateway to presence is breath, movement, and sound. And the gateway to actually feel and experience all the magic of life is presence. So these simple tools that we have are all that we need to, to be the most you know, profound Tantra master ever. <laughs> Breathing, moving, sounding, you have everything. <laughs> well, there you have it. Um, two master, I mean, three master Jedis <laughs> in a little screen. <laughs> mm -hmm. You are a master Jedi too, wh whoever's watching. That's what that's, what that's <laughs> too. <laughs> And your superpower, your tools are breath, movement, and sound. Mm. And it doesn't have to be too fancy, but it can be fancy. Like yeah. some of the sounds Fia makes, very fancy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, thank you for being here. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move. I'm going to do some movement. And I am honored to have you. For anyone that wants to get in touch with either one of these beautiful beings, you'll have all the information accessible to reach out to them. And um, if you want to share what's the best way, that, is there any preferred way that you would like anyone to reach out to you? Um, Eugene? Um, I mean, you're finding my Facebook is good. Um, my uh, School of Tribal Tantra is on Facebook. We have a page and then Tribal Tantra Trainings. TribalTantraTrainings.com is the, the website that has all of the, the courses. Awesome. So Facebook and your website. Mm -hmm. And then Fia. Um, if you want to follow along the journey, I'm super active on Instagram and Facebook. So Instagram is Fia Forstrom, F-O-R-S-S-T-R-R-O-M. And Facebook is Fia's Music. And the music you find everywhere on all the streaming sites. So listen if you want <laughs> well thank you so much for being here and thank you for watching this is so truth embodied leadership in the new paradigm and thank you fia and thank you eugene many blessings and have thank you for day. having us yeah yeah <laughs>